Welcome to the Wish I'd Known Then podcast, where we focus on how authors found success, looking at strategies that have taken them to the top of the bestseller charts, as well as what they've learned from their mistakes. Because being an indie author is more than knowing the latest marketing trend. It's about being innovative and creative and learning from your mistakes. Your co-hosts, Jamie Albright and Sarah Rosette, couldn't be more different. In fact, they're a study in contrasts. However, despite all of their differences, they agree that sharing what they wish they'd known, both the good and the bad, is the key to moving forward. Let's get to the show. I'm Sarah Rosette. And I'm Jamie Albright. Welcome to the Wish I'd Known Them podcast for authors. How are you, Sarah? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm great. I'm excited about today's show. Yeah, so today we have an interview with Amy Bowles, and she's going to talk to us about Paranormal Cozy Mystery, which if you don't know what that is, we talk about the defined genre, and we have a lot of fun, and we laugh a lot, but um, we also (laughs) talk about... um, Writing around the edges of life and writing with kids and tropes and um, right and uh, Amy and Jamie uh, geeked out over their love of Southern stuff. Well, because we both are. So. <laughs> <laughs> you are too, but you're just not quite as Southern as the two of us are. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Well, um, I wanted to before we get started say, y'all. The response to this podcast has been amazing. We are just blown away. So thank you so much. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for talking about it. We've had over 85 hours of listening. I mean, that's just just in the first two or three days. So we're really, really blown away. So thank you yeah. so, so much. And, you know, if you love the podcast, please rate and review it. That's how we get seen. And uh, But mostly, we're just so grateful. Yeah, yeah, we're we're so excited. It's yeah. very it's very cool and it's yeah. just um we're really happy with the response. Yeah. It's a little Absolutely. overwhelming for me as an <laughs> introvert, but Jamie's loving it. <laughs> I'm like, you <"Yoo!" laughs> yeah. So but um let's see, so we've got some updates. Um yeah. one is um that we have a website. Yeah. Which is called um wish I'd known for writers dot com. Yes. And um, you can find the episode notes there. We don't have show notes or we don't have transcripts yet, but we may be able to do that. We've had a request for that. So that may be in the works if we right. can figure out all our details on that. Yes. And um, so we're going to, let's talk about what, what's going on with us. Okay. And then we'll come back. Right. To so anything going on with you this week? Uh, yeah, it's been kind of a big week. I launched my box set um, last Thursday. So Thursday the 23rd I think and um, so in the original podcast we did I said I'd never launch at 99 cents again well I did but (laughs) it was really an experiment with this box set to see because I'm in KU and I want to I wanted to see how page reads would go and I'm still looking at I mean for the most part I'm happy with it there have been some things that I thought hmm I thought that would go a little bit better or it would be a little, a little more dynamic and exciting, but um, it's, but it's still been really good. So when I get all the data and look at it, I'll, I'll share with everybody. But yeah. So if you see my box set and it's 99 cents and you're like, she said she'd never do that again. Well, I did. So, yeah. <laughs> I and think you're I talking also, about for a single uh, yes, release, for a single right. Book. Yeah, 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 for a single yeah. release. But also in relation to that, I, I did want to correct one thing I said about in the when I was talking about Chris Fox. What Chris Fox said was he wouldn't launch a second book in a series at ninety nine cents. He has done that. I mean, he has launched nine, books at ninety nine cents, but he he would not launch a second book in a series, which is exactly what I did. So, <laughs> anyway, just what I don't want to misquote anyone, so I just wanted to make yeah. clear that up. Yeah. Yeah. How about you? What's going on with you? Uh, well, uh, my nonfiction How to Write a Series book came out, and it Yay. came out on um, one twenty twenty. So that was a complete accident, but I kind of like the symmetry yeah. of it. Yeah. So that's a um, big overview of How to Write a Series. It's actually, it's everything I wish I had known about writing a series mm-hmm. when I started writing, mm-hmm. and um, kind of looks at the different types of series, multi-protagonist, single protagonist, um, troubleshooting tips. I put everything in there that I could think of, troubleshooting tips marketing ideas, 
um, when to end a series, when to extend one, mm -hmm. literary universes, all kinds of stuff like that. So, and you've got really good examples in there too. I think. I think. Yeah, that, I think so. You know, I, for those I talk, of us that are I, a little more literal. You know, yeah. Speaking. Well, that helps me too because I need that when I. It's abstract until somebody gives me an example. Mm -hmm. So I tried to include a lot of those. So I talked to a lot of different writers and um, got some ideas on examples for the genres that I'm not completely immersed in. Mm -hmm. So I tried to um, include enough that it'll help be helpful for most writers, I hope. So, right. so in light of that, though, we want to ask you guys a question of the week this week. And it's who would you like to see on the podcast or what subjects would you like to hear us talk about or both? You can answer both. Mm -hmm. And we're going to pick a winner and the winner will win either both actually oh yeah both that's right both an hour <laughs> of coaching from me and we can talk about book launching we can talk about ads we can talk about just your product page and how we can improve that um publishing strategies or and you will also win a copy of sarah's new book how to write a series yeah. so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so, so. Yeah, so we figured we'd love to hear from you guys, and that would be yeah. something that we could give back to y'all because the response has been so exciting, and yes. just everyone's been very um, positive and encouraging, so mm -hmm. um, we hope that will help some people out, and I will say that as an introverted writer, the idea of talking to somebody one-on-one, -on -one, like, calling some, like calling Jamie up and saying, hey, help me with this, is intimidating, but don't be intimidated take advantage of it because Jamie's really good at figuring out what's working and helping you figure out how to make things work better. Mm, so thank you. I would yeah. definitely do that if yeah. I had the opportunity. She and gives me coaching at lunch, which is yeah. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but I love to help and yeah, any, anything I can do, that would, would be great. Um, so yeah, that was, so at the end of this episode, uh, you can go to the website. Yeah. So and, it's, um, Wish I'd known them for writers.com and it'll be episode three with yes. Amy with Amy and answer those questions who you'd like to see on the show and what subjects you'd like us to cover. And then we'll draw a winner and some of you will win those both, both those prizes. So you ready to get to the show, Sarah? Yeah, I think we've talked enough. <laughs> I know I do too. <laughs> so I need good. Sarah to roll, roll, uh, rein me in sometimes. <laughs> no, you do. All great. right. All right. Take care and we'll see you on the other side. Amy Bowles writes books for folks who crave laugh out loud paranormal mysteries. She helps bring humor to readers' lives. When she's not writing or chasing around two small children, one of which is four going on 13, she can be found antique shopping for a great deal. Hi, Amy. How are you? Hi, good. How are you doing? Good. Hi, Amy. Hey, Jamie. Good to see you again. It's good to have another seven girl, but <laughs> we may need a translator for this podcast between the two of us. <laughs> so Amy, tell us about what you write. Um, so I write paranormal cozy mysteries with a Southern flair, everything from witches to ghost hunters, um, that sort of thing. Very good. Very good. Um, so they're, they're cozy mysteries with a paranormal flair. Yes, very yeah. much so. Um, so your traditional cozy mystery, you know, takes place in a small town. You have this sort of female sleuth um, mm -hmm. and, you know, that community because the, the cozy mystery is very much about the community of the town mm -hmm. um, and the, the people and the characters in it because you can have very quirky characters. And so I take those same concepts but add uh, witches or a ghost hunter. I have a ghost hunter series where she's a ghost hunter with two old grannies who uh, help <laughs> find ghosts with her. So that's, that's as the well. They should yes. as well. They should. Cause they, you know, what else yeah. are you going to do? Exactly. Um, you can only play so much canasta. <laughs> exactly right. And they don't even do that. One of them knits booties. Uh, um, <laughs> so yeah, I should have them knitting canasta next yeah, time. Yeah. Funny. So, the cozies have a lot of humor, right? And that's a big element in your mysteries, right? It's like the humor element, right? Yeah, I try to play that up um, uh, as much as I can. And it gets, I mean, it can get very absurd at times. Um, 
you know, I have one grandmother who snorts magic out of her nose. She also, I mean, right. And she also <laughs> smokes a pipe because I was really trying to make her like granny clamp it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. She absolutely. smokes a pipe. She has a shotgun. I think mm-hmm. in one of the early scenes when they first met the granddaughter and the grandmother, I mean, she's sitting at home with a shotgun on her lap waiting for her to get home because it's curfew time. Yeah. yeah. So Oh, ready to put great. some buckshot in somebody <laughs> rear end. So, I mean, you know, it's, I take one element and exaggerate it as much as I think I can get away with. Yeah. yeah. I know. I do the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, so, try to keep, I try to keep them not characters, but it's really <laughs> hard because especially when you're writing Southern characters, they're so fun and so easy to exaggerate, I suppose. Yeah, and I think that it's good to take a trope and expand on it. I mean, mm-hmm. I, you know, I've had reviews where it's, you know, but they're few and far between where it's like um, just really making fun of Southerners mm-hmm. or exaggerating. But I, I think that's part of the fun of it. I, I think the Beverly Hillbillies was popular for a reason. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. I mean, and other and you, you live in the South, so it's yeah, like yeah. You, you know that world. And it, it's like it's okay to poke fun at something you know. But whereas if like you were writing about something you didn't know, that's harder to poke fun at and get away with yeah. because yeah. you know it. Yeah, no. And I think in some ways my books are probably very, um, uh, it's not a wide demographic for the reasons of I don't want to attempt to, I don't want to insult anybody else. You know, I'm okay insulting people who <laughs> I know. Well, my family members in there, I'm going to insult them. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I, I at least am aware of my own ceiling. Yeah. Yeah. So that's quite a contrast because before you, or like before you began writing full time, right? You had a different full time career and it was very different. So can you tell us about that and how you transitioned to writing and kind of what drew you to that? Yes. So I am a pharmacist by trade. Um, for various reasons, one of which was that I wanted to, I had an an English degree and those of us who have English degrees know what we're qualified to do in life. And that's nothing. Nothing. (laughs) I can second that as an English lit major. Exactly. You know, I was an English writing major with basically a lit minor. I mean, it's the same thing, but I, you know, I was qualified to be no more than an administrative assistant. Really, and mm-hmm. I could have, you know, work, you know, you could work your way up in an organization, obviously, in that route. Um, but that's what I was that I could do. So I went mm-hmm. back to school and got my pharmacist degree, um, and that was very interesting because I went back um, in my thirties and did mm-hmm. that. And so I'm hanging out with twenty year olds, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Not, but I mean, there was a big, you know, gap there. And I had a group of friends that, you know, were a little bit closer to my age. But um, so yeah, so I went back and did that basically because I didn't want to be a bag lady. But I do also <laughs> like pharmacy. <laughs> um, but I do love pharmacy, especially community pharmacy when it's this little independent place and you have that interaction with patients who are really more like your family. Um, Mm -hmm. But, you know, but it is very clinical and you have to, obviously it's a lot of information in your brain. You try to be safe and keep people alive. (laughs) Clearly you like to follow a logical career path. (laughs) (laughs) That's been my main goal in life. (laughs) Tell us what drew you to writing. I guess you did. It is sort of logical. You just took a little break in between, but yeah. Yes, I'd always written. In fact, when I was young, um, I read, as many of us probably did, Little Women and was influenced Mm -hmm. by that book. And so I wrote a book called Little Children. Um, But in my book, the parents died because obviously they had to be orphans somehow. This (laughs) one. It's the basis of all good children's literature, right? (laughs) The parents are dead. (laughs) This upset my father quite a bit. I think he thought that I, <laughs> Jamie, you're going to have to stop laughing so much. <laughs> Lord, so I think he felt that I was putting my feelings on to them, but I wasn't in my mind, like they're going to be orphans. They have to be orphans somehow. So, mm-hmm. um, so actually I stopped writing for a long time, after. <laughs> you know, cause I, you know, I, obviously my father didn't want to squash my dreams, but anyway, um, so I did. And then I got back into it um, in 
college and I'd always wanted to do it. So then I pursued a writing degree and I had a great professor, mm -hmm. great teacher. And, um, and that's how that happened. Oh, yeah. And then I took another break. I think what happens, I think before the Kindle came out, um, and you could get 99 cent books. I think a lot of us readers fell back to the wayside when we're in college and mm -hmm. whatnot. You can't afford any no, books. You can't. Mm -hmm. no. no, when I do my ads, I do not, I don't target anybody below 25 because I just assume they don't have any money. Yeah, so, you, yeah. you don't have money. I know you don't have money because I'm <laughs> I'm not even going to tempt you. <laughs> <laughs> Save your money. Yeah. So I felt, you know, I, I went to that fell by the wayside thing and then I, I, I read Twilight. That's what it was. Oh, me too. That was my gateway drug. <laughs> oh, and I, I, read, I love it. Look, we both read Twilight. And then I read that and was like, well, heck, I could write a book. I don't know if I could write it this good, but I could write it. Mm -hmm. So I had a break when I was in pharmacy school, a month long break. And I wrote a book. I did oh, Nano Rhino wow. in January. I didn't even oh. know Nano Rhino existed, but I was sitting there. This is when I could crank out ten thousand words a day oh because I didn't God. have children. <laughs> yeah. they had so you were the life out of you yet? I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you were doing ten thousand words a day before that was the cool thing to do. Like you yeah. just did it because you're passionate yeah. about it, right? Yes, yeah, because I could do it, and I could write this great horrible book. <laughs> book. It's clearly bad. I, it's printed out and put somewhere. I don't know where I would never read it again, but, um, but I did it just to, just to feel like I could do it. Yeah. Well, that yeah. is really cool. That is, that is cool. cool. So, um, what was your first big success? Do you feel like in your writing career? Like My when first... did you think this is going to be okay? It's going to take off. It was when I published scared witchless in I think June of 2016. Um, that was my first foray into paranormal cozy mysteries. It was right when I, I found the genre, I think earlier in that year and, um, read a lot of the books that were in there. And I was just like, I could do this. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I mean, I think we say that to ourselves a lot, you, know, you don't really know if you can or not. Um, but I had a lot of hope. I think that that's one thing that drives me is just, um, hope that fingers crossed will not be squashed mm -hmm. I'm always pushing and driving and what's next what's next what's next yeah yeah the eternal and, optimist yeah well i i hope <laughs> <laughs> right. um, because you know i am a writer so there is a lot of that um self-doubt too mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like a di dichotomy. Like we have the, oh, I think I could do this. And at the same time, then you start and you're like, oh, I can't do this. It's too hard. I always so say like that. We, that yeah. It's juggling act. Yeah. Writers have, we're this huge dichotomy. On one hand, we have these giant egos where we think, oh, we can do this. We can tell. <laughs> and then on the, we have crushing self-doubt where we're in the mm -hmm. fetal position. So if we can get out of the fetal position and into the chair, we do pretty well. But yeah. 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 So. Um, so you write full time now and you have small kids. How did you transition to that? And how do you juggle all those things? Cause my kids were grown when I started writing. So, yeah. So before I, um, you know, I wrote those 10,000 words, so mm -hmm. I knew how to write and I knew how to write fast. I'd kind of mm -hmm. just self-taught myself how to write fast. Wow. So when I was pregnant with my oldest, I was still trying to be pu traditionally published. And I would get up every morning at 4 a.m. Because a friend of mine used to do this. And I was like, if she can do it, I can do it. You know, that's my motto. If they right, can do right. it, I can do it too. Um, so I would get up at 4 a.m. and write like 2,000 words is what I think I did at that time. Mm -hmm. um, and I would knock those out in an hour. Mm -hmm. And so I did that. And I just kept doing that after she was born. And I was right. And I was working full time. And then I had this job. I was a pharmacist. I was the only person in this little store that was attached to a clinic and we were slow. We were yeah. so slow. I could sit in there and write books. Shh, don't tell my old boss that I would. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would. And so, I, so that's when I wrote actually scared witch list and started the bless your witch series. I was, I was writing there and then that place closed well, you know, they were pretty close. So. They, were, pretty close. <laughs> they were hanging on by a thread anyway. They were, and I lost my job. Um, and so I had to find a new job. 
and I, I just kept writing in the mornings and had another baby. And then, um, I would just kind of keep at it and I would work weekends. I mean, I was working every single day. If I wasn't writing, I was physically working. I was just always working, working, working. And then, um, I get, I would get help as much as I could with the kids. Cause I had to, when you have little kids, yeah. you know, if a mother-in-law wants to help, your mom wants to help. I mean, I would just, Hey, can you come over and watch them for a couple of hours? And yeah. I would, you know, go and ride or whatever. Yeah. So, I mean, it just, I just kind of, always found ways to try to always keep writing. I love that. I love that you found those, you know, they talk about on the, what is it? The edges of your life, you know, you mm -hmm. find those times. Um, and I think that, I mean, it helps so much that you can write fast. Like you can, if you've got an hour or two, you can really crank out some words. So that really does um, help. I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed by that. I'll just have to tell you. Oh, I'm a slow rider. <laughs> well, thank you. well it, it actually has slowed down a bit. Like I get up now at 5 a.m. I don't get up at 4 anymore because that's crazy. But I get up at 5 and I, I write a thousand words and then I start getting ready for the day. Mm -hmm. And so now the process has translated into, well, one's in preschool and one's in school now, mm -hmm. kindergarten. So now the process has translated into, okay, I'm back. I'm here at the house. I'm going to write 500 words and then I'm going to go do some laundry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 500 more words. I'm going to do some dishes. That's so, great. Yeah. But it's still, it kind of breaks it up and I can still get those. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> it's a little atmosphere for the podcast. That's all. Yeah, that's good. He can be our mascot. <laughs> So I totally understand that though, because I did a lot of writing when the kids were little and I used to print, this was back when I used to print my manuscript out and I'd take it with me. I did a lot of editing, like waiting in the car line at school, you know, and I had this big monster notebook and I would take it to the dentist office and orthodontist office, you know, so totally identify with that, like just kind of fitting it in wherever you can. So it's sometimes it's the only way to get anything done you know, you know, it is, it really is. Um, but it's just, it's gotten easier. And that's what people always say when you have little kids, it's going to get easier. It gets easier. <laughs> and once you kind of, once I could get them into school and it, it has gotten easier. Yeah. I think you have more time when they get older, but I think that it's just different. You know, you have more time, but different demands, you know, on your time. But anyway, um, what's the biggest wish I'd known then moment for you? Um, so I guess one of them is I wish I'd known then what I was good at writing mm. because when I started in indie publishing, which was totally a fluke, by the way, I never considered indie publishing. I didn't know anything about it until a couple of friends dragged me into doing an anthology, mm -hmm. <clears throat> a romance anthology. And I was like, this will be great. Let's do it but I was writing this crazy hodgepodge thing. My husband looked at me and he said, well, you don't, but you don't write romance. I was like, yes, I do. I write romance. That's what Something. I write. <laughs> I'm romantic, dang it. <laughs> exactly. Doesn't that qualify? Um, Sarah, Sarah, aren't you proud of me? I, I censored myself. <laughs> <laughs> you did so good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a loose cannon over here. <laughs> I do have a mute, mute button ready to go, with, though. With my potty mouth, yeah. <laughs> so I think a lot of times it takes us a while to figure out what we're good at, though. Mm -hmm. You know, or like we figure, I'm going to write in this genre. And then you go, oh, wait, I actually fit better over here in this one. Or a new one opens up, you know. So sometimes it can take a while. Yeah, you but, never really know. Yeah, you don't. I mean, have you ever had a mistake that turned out to be a good thing, though? I can't think of anything that I've had a mistake at that turned out to be good. If I make a mistake, it's generally like a mistake. mistake. It's a whopper. Yeah. I, I mean, um, even, you know, I, I, in terms of like publishing or anything like that, no, like my mistakes are my mistakes. Oh, my other thing that I wish I'd known then that I do, that I do think is a solid thing for anyone. It would be knowing when, to not continue with a series mm -hmm. it, being able to really look at something and say to yourself, this isn't working. It's not connecting with readers. Mm -hmm. Um, just, you got to just cut your losses and move on. Right. 
Yeah. Sometimes we're so attached. It's really yeah. hard to mm-hmm. give something up. Well, that's exactly how I was. I was so attached to it. Well, it's going to pick up. It's going to pick up. Well, it never picked up. And, you know, eventually I just had to admit to myself, <laughs> this is not working. This isn't. It's this thing is dead and gone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause I'm very loyal. And so I feel yeah. like I'm almost feel loyal to those characters and to the readers that like those characters, even if they're a little small group. Yeah. I feel like the I have a hard time. <laughs> <that's laughs> <going, please. laughs> yeah. I know. I know. I know. That feeling too. Yeah. I know. I have a hard time doing that. So, um, so here's our, another question, turning the last one on its head. Um, is there something that you thought was a great idea that you look back on and go, Oh, that was not a good idea. I shouldn't have done that. Oh, I agree. Um, I mean, that could be, I, no, <laughs> ask me next year because I have, I'm doing some serious things that I think were going to be great ideas, but I'm afraid they might not be, but I mean, you, I just don't know. Um, I, I mean, I, I guess nothing that would end up being a total disaster. No. Or, you know, maybe something wasn't as, as successful as I hoped it would be. Yeah. Yes, maybe that sort of thing. But you yeah. Just, Again, you just never know until you do it. Yeah. That's the thing about this business. You just have to, we don't ever, we can't ever split test anything really. We have to just, you know, try one blurb and then if that doesn't work, try another one or, you know, change yeah. the subgenre or whatever we write in. So yeah. yeah. And I hope you don't get caught with your pants down. Yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh, so what are the biggest changes you've seen in the industry, Amy, like writing and or marketing wise? The biggest changes I've seen, um, and I, this, and there's a lot of room for disagreement here because there's always disagreement when it comes to changes we've seen in the industry. Um, I think one is when I started the, um, the 90 day cliff wasn't so bad and the Amazon 90 day cliff for anyone who needs a little bit a more description on that. And I think that, um, and I also at the time believed that every 90 days was fine really for me or in my genre to put out a book. Um, and, um, but I think there are a lot of readers out there who don't know authors anymore. They just know pictures, you know, or they know covers, they know branding Mm -hmm. more than they know who the author is. So I feel like that has changed a lot. So always trying to, pull in new readers, being, um, active with new readers or, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. associating with readers more. I think that's taking over more in a way than it it did a couple of years ago, or at least in my genre. I think in romance, Mm -hmm. it's very different. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's the same. I think, um, that, but one thing I've been working on is making my name, my, my brand, like not just the fonts and the pictures and, but that my name is, my brand and um that's that's hard it's a hard thing i think interacting with readers and stuff is one of the best ways to do that though so they remember you yeah and not necessarily just your books yeah and i think that's smart making your name the brand because then i mean you're telling them that your brand is important Mm -hmm. you know in this way that i mean i don't know if you're thinking of like a Janet Ivanovich kind of cover or yeah, something, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that, I mean, that's telling them this, this, this author is important. And I think mm-hmm. that's smart. Yeah. yeah. Cause that's what they need to know. Yes. Yeah. There, <laughs> there's some study that some, one of the, um, I was trying to think, I, one of the writers organizations did, and it said that it took like six or seven books before someone had to read six or seven books before they started remembering the author's name. And I thought that's just a crazy statistic, especially now, like when a lot of people read on their Kindles and they don't see the cover and they're, you know, like in a print book, your name is at the top and the titles at the top, but on an ebook, you could just read one and then you'll see the, maybe the back manner will have the author's name, you know, sign up for my newsletter list or, but not, not all, not all the time. So that's just crazy that it can. So I guess that's why series is good. If you can get them in and get them to keep reading, then you have, more chances of them connecting to you. So, right. And I think that's interesting because as a writer, obviously I pay attention to other writers. Mm -hmm. So if I'm picking up someone's book, I I remember who it is for the most part, but yeah. Yeah. So very different. I don't know. I was reading, I've just finished a um, historical romance, which uh, I haven't read one in a while and it was really good. It's called the beast of Bestwick by Amelia Howard. (laughs) 
<laughs> y'all. I'm so sorry. But I had to, yesterday I was telling somebody about it and I had to stop and get on my Kindle and open it up to find her name. Cause mm-hmm. I just, yeah, I just don't think it, I don't look at names as much anymore. If it's somebody I know when I start reading it, that's one thing, but if it's a new mm-hmm. author to me, I, I, I have to go back to. Um, last question. Yes. Um, what's the biggest thing you've done to set yourself up for success, either in writing or marketing or both? Is there anything that you think has been like just something that's been very helpful? I think part of it is connecting with other writers, um, especially in the genre, meeting other authors, I think is very important, not only to, um, help introduce you to other readers and their readers, but also just to get their ideas and their support. Um, I think that's been the smartest thing that I've ever done. Yeah. And the paranormal cozy mystery community is very tight. I feel like, I feel like that it's a little, you know, like you guys do a lot to support each other and shout out each other, like when books come out and stuff. So I can see that that could be really important. Yeah. It is. And still meeting new authors as well, reaching out to new authors too. Yeah. Cool. Well, I agree. I think that that's the big thing, you know, being a good community member and getting involved with the community is really smart. You've done, you've done well to do that for sure. So Amy, tell us where people can find you in your books. They can find me at amybowles.com and that's Bowles, B-O-Y-L-E-S, which most every other normal person says amyboyles.com. You can find me there. Perfect. Thank you Very so much. Thank, Thank you, you Amy. ladies. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Wish I'd Known Men podcast. We hope this episode inspired you, empowered you, and made you laugh a little bit too. If you loved it, tell your friends about it. And if you feel so inclined, leave us a review. We look forward to being with you again next week.